Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read 2 Chronicles 24 to 29, Psalm 137, and Proverbs 19. Let's get started. And Meiji was 25 years old when he became king. He ruled in Jerusalem for 29 years. His mother's name was Jehoaddan. She was from Jerusalem. And Meiji did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. But he didn't do it with all his heart. The kingdom was firmly under his control. So he put to death the officials who had murdered his father, the king. But he didn't put their children to death. He obeyed what is written in the law, the book of Moses. There the Lord commanded, Parents must not be put to death because of what their children do. And children must not be put to death because of what their parents do. People must die because of their own sin. And Moses called the people of Judah together. He arranged them by family under the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. He did it for all the people of Judah and Benjamin. Then he brought together the men who were 320 years old or more. He found that there were 300,000 men who were able to serve in the army. They could handle spears and shields. He also hired 100,000 fighting men from Israel. He had to pay them almost four tons of silver. But a man of God came to him. He said, Your Majesty, these troops from Israel must not march out with you. The Lord is not with Israel. He isn't with any of the people of Ephraim. Go and fight bravely in battle if you want to. But God will destroy you right in front of your enemy. God has the power to help you or destroy you. Amazia asked the man of God, But what about all that silver I paid for these Israelite troops? The man of God replied, The Lord can give you much more than that. So Amazia let the troops go who had come to him from Ephraim. He sent them home. They were very angry with you. They were still very angry when they went home. Then Amaziah showed how strong he was. He led his army to the Valley of Saul. They killed 10,000 men of Seir. The army of Judah also captured 10,000 men alive. The army of Judah took them to the top of a cliff. Then they threw them down. All of them were smashed to pieces. The troops Amaziah had sent back attacked some towns that belonged to Judah. Amaziah hadn't allowed the troops to take part in the war. They attacked towns from Samaria to Beth Horn. They killed 30,000, 3,000 people. They carried off huge amounts of goods. Amazia returned from killing the men of Edom. He brought back the statues of the gods of Seir. He set them up as his own gods. He bowed down to them. He burned sacrifices to them. The Lord was very angry with Amazia. He sent a prophet to him. The prophet said, Why do you ask the gods of those people for advice? They couldn't even save their own people from your power. While the prophet was still speaking, the king spoke to him. He said, Did I ask you for advice? Stop. If you don't, you will be struck down. So the prophet stopped. But then he said, I know that God has decided to destroy you. That's because you have worshipped my worshipped other gods. You haven't listened to my advice. Amazing the king of Jesus spoke to his advisors. Then he sent a message to Jehoash, the king of Israel. Jehoash was the son of Jehoahaz. Jehoahaz was the son of Jehu. Amazia dared Jehoash. Come on, let's face each other in battle. But Jehoash, the king of Israel, answered Amazia, the king of Judah. Jehoash said, A thornbush in Laban sent a message to a cedar tree there. The thornbush said, Give your daughter to be married to my son. Then a wild animal in Laban came along. It crushed the thornbush by walking on it. You brag that you have won the battle over Edom. You are very proud, but stay home. Why ask for trouble? Why bring yourself crashing down? Why bring you Judah down with you? But Amazia wouldn't listen. That's because God had planned to hand Judah over to Jehoash. After all, they had asked the gods of Edom for advice. So Jehoash, the king of Israel, attacked. He and Amazia, the king of Judah, faced each other in battle. The battle took place at Beth Shemesh in Judah. Israel broke, drove Judah away. Every man went home. Jehoash, king of Israel, captured Amaziah, king of Judah, at Beth Shemesh. Amaziah was the son of Joash. Joash was the son of Ahaziah. Jehoash brought Amaziah to Jerusalem. Jehoash broke down part of its wall. It's the part that went from the Ephraim gate to the corner gate. That part of the wall was 600 feet long. Jehoash took all the gold and silver. He took all the objects he found in God's temple. Obed Adam had been in charge of them. 
Jehoash also took the palace treasures and the prisoners. Then he returned to Samaria. Amaziah king of Judah lived for 15 years after Jehoash king of Ezra died. Amaziah was the son of Jehoash. Jehoash was the son of Jehoahaz. The other events of Amaziah's rule from beginning to end are written down. They are written in the records of the kings of Judah and Ezra. Amaziah turned away from obeying the Lord. From that time on, some people made evil plans against him in Jerusalem. So he ran away to Lachish, but they sent men after him to Lachish. There they killed him. His body was brought back on a horse to Jerusalem, the city of Judah. There he was buried in the family tomb. Chapter 26 All the people of Judah made Uzziah king. He was 16 years old. They made him king in place of his father Amaziah. Uzziah built, rebuilt Elath. He built it under Judah's control. Again, he did it after Amaziah joined the members of his family who had already died. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king. He ruled in Jerusalem for 52 years. His mother's name was Jacobia. She was from Jerusalem. Uzziah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. He tried to obey God during the days of Zechariah. Zechariah taught him to have respect for God. As long as Uzziah obeyed the Lord, he gave him success. Uzziah went to war against the Philistines. He broke down the walls of Gath, Jabneth, and Ashdod. Then he rebuilt some towns that were near Ashdod. He also rebuilt some other towns where Philistines lived. God helped him fight against the Philistines. He also helped him fight against the Meunites and against the Arabs who lived in Gerbal. The Ammonites brought to Uzziah the gifts he required of them. He became famous all the way to the border of Egypt. That's because he had become very powerful. Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem. They were at the corner gate, the valley gate, and the angle of the wall. He made the towers very strong. He also built towers in the desert. He dug many wells because he had a lot of livestock. The livestock were in the western hills and in the, on the plains. Uzziah had people working in his fields and vineyards and the hills and in the rich lands. That's because he loved the soil. Uzziah's army was well trained. It was ready to march out by military groups according to their numbers. Geo and Masaya brought them together. Geo was the secretary. Masaya was the officer. They are under the direction of Hananiah. He is one of the royal officials. The total number of family leaders who were over the fighting unit was 2,600. An army of 307,500 men was under their command. The men were trained for war. They were a powerful force. They helped the king against his enemies. Isaiah provided the entire army with shields, spears, and helmets, coats of armor, bows, and stones for their slings. In Jerusalem, he invented machines to be used on the towers and on the corners of city walls. These machines were used by men who shot arrows from the walls. The machines were also used by men to throw large stones from the walls. Uzziah became famous everywhere. God greatly helped him until he became powerful. But after Uzziah became powerful, his pride brought him down. He wasn't faithful to the Lord his God. He entered the Lord's temple to burn incense on the altar for burning incense. Azariah the priest followed him in. So did 80 other brave priests of the Lord. They stood up to Uzziah. They said, Uzziah, it isn't right for you to burn incense to the Lord. Only the priests are supposed to do that. They are members of the family line of Aaron. They have been set apart to burn incense. So get out of here. Leave the temple. You haven't been faithful. The Lord God went on you. Uzziah was holding a shower cup. He was ready to burn incense in it. He became angry. He shouted at the priest in the Lord's temple. He did it near the altar for burning incense. While he was shouting, a skin disease suddenly broke out on his forehead. Azariah the chief priest and all the other priests looked at him. They saw that Uzziah had a skin disease on his forehead. So they hurried him out of the temple. Actually, he himself really wanted to leave. He knew that the Lord was making him suffer. King Uzziah had the skin disease until the day he died. He lived in a separate house because he had the disease, and he wasn't allowed to enter the Lord's temple. Uzziah's son Jotham was in charge of the palace. Jotham ruled over the people of the land. The other events of Uzziah's rule 
from beginning to end were written down by Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah was the son of Amos. Isaiah joined the members of his family who had already died. He was buried near them in a royal burial ground. People said he had a skin disease. Uzziah's son John, Jotham, became the next king after him. Chapter 27 Jotham was 25 years old when he became king. He ruled in Jerusalem for 16 years. His mother's name was Jerusha. She was the daughter of Zadok. Jotham did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father had done. Uzziah had done. But Jotham didn't enter the Lord's temple as, Uz as Uzziah had done. The people, however, continued to do very simple things. Jotham rebuilt the upper gate of, of the Lord's temple. He did a lot of work on the wall at the hill of Ophel. He built, he built towns in the hill country of Judah. He also built forts and towers in areas that had lo a lot of trees in them. Jotham went to war against the king of Ammon. He won the battle over the Ammonites. That year they paid Jotham almost four tons of silver. They paid him 1,800 1, 1, tons of wheat and 1,500 tons of barley. They also brought him the same amount in the second and third years. Jotham became powerful. That's because he had worshipped the Lord his God with all his heart. The other events of Jotham's rule are written down. That includes all his wars and the other things he did. All these things are written in the records of the kings of Israel and Judah. Jotham was 25 years old when he became king. He ruled in Jerusalem for 16 years. Jotham joined the members of his family who had already died. He was buried in the city of David. Jonathan's son Ahaz became the next king after him. Chapter 28 Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king. He ruled in Jerusalem for 16 years. He didn't do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't do what King David had done. He followed the ways of the kings of Israel. He also made statues of gods that were named Baal. He burned sacrifices in the valley of Beth ben Hinnom. He sacrificed his children in the fire to, the, to other gods. He followed the practices of the nations. The Lord hates these practices. The Lord had driven out those nations to make room for the people of Israel. Ahaz offered sacrifices and burned incense at the high places. He also did it on the tops of the hills and under every green tree. So the Lord has God handed him over to the king of Aram. The men of Aram won the battle over him. They took many of his people as prisoners. They brought them to Damascus. God also handed Ahaz over to Pekah. Pekah was king of Israel. His army wounded or killed many of the troops of Ahaz. In one day, Pekah, the son of Amalia, killed 120,000 soldiers in Judah. That's because Judah had deserted the Lord, the God of their people. Zikri was a fighting man from Ephraim. He killed Messiah, as we can, and, and Elkanah. Messiah was the king's son. Ezrikam was the officer who was in charge of the palace. And Elkanah was next in command after the king. The men of Israel captured 200,000 wives, sons, and daughters from their relatives in Judah. They also took a large amount of goods. They carried all of it back to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there. His name was Oded. When the army returned to Samaria, he went out to meet them. He said to them, The Lord is the God of your people. He, is very angry. he was very angry with Judah. So he handed them over to you, but you, but you have killed them. Your anger reached all the way to heaven. Now you are planning to leave, to make the men and women of Judah and Jerusalem your slaves. But aren't you also guilty of sins against the Lord your God? Listen to me. You have taken your realities from Judah as prisoners. The Lord is very angry with you. So send your realities back. Then some of the leaders in Ephraim stood up to those who were returning from the war. The leaders were Azariah, Barakiah, Jehizkiah, and Amasa. Azariah was the son of Jehohanan. Barakiah was the son of Meshulamoth. Jehizkiah was the son of Shalom. And Amasa was the son of Hadlar. Don't bring those prisoners here. They said, if you do, we'll be guilty in the sight of the Lord. Do you really want to add to our sin and guilt? We're already very guilty. 
The Lord is very angry with Israel. So the soldiers gave up the prisoners and the goods they had taken. They did in front of the officials and the whole community. Azariah, Berkiah, Jehizkiah, and Amasa received the prisoners. From the goods that had been taken, they gave clothes to everyone who, went, who was naked. They gave them clothes, sandals, food, drink, and healing lotions. They put all the weak people on donkeys. They took them back to their realities at Jericho. Then they returned to Samaria. Jericho was also known as the city of palm trees. At that time, King Ahaz sent men to the king of Assyria to get help. The men of Edom had come and attacked Judah again. They had carried away prisoners. At the same time, the Philistines had attacked towns in the western hills and in the Negev desert of Judah. They captured Beth Shemesh, Ijal, and Gedaloth. They had also captured Soko, Timnah, and Gizmo, and the villages around them. They had sailed down in all of them. The Lord had made Judah less powerful because of Ahaz, their king. Ahaz had stirred up the people of Judah to do evil things. He hadn't been faithful to the Lord at all. Tiglath Pilzer came to Ahaz, but he g- gave Ahaz trouble instead of help. Tiglath Pilzer was king of Assyria, but that didn't help. Ahaz took some things from the Lord's temple. He also took some from the royal palace and the, from the officials. He gave all of them to the king of the ship, but that didn't help Ahaz. When King Ahaz was in trouble, he became even more unfaithful to the Lord. Ahaz offered sacrifices to the gods of Damascus. They won the battle over him. Ahaz built. The gods of the kings of Aram had helped them. So I'll sacrifice to those gods. Then that will help me. But those gods only caused his ruin. In fact, those gods caused the ruin of the whole nation of Israel. Ahaz gathered together everything that belonged to God's temple. He cut all of it in pieces. Ahaz shut the doors of the Lord's temple. He set up altars at every street corner in Jerusalem. In every town in Judah, he built high places. Sacrifices were burned there to other gods. That made the Lord, the God of his people, very, very, very angry. The other offense of the rule of Ahaz and all his evil practices from beginning to end are written down. They are written in the records of the kings of Judah and Israel. Ahaz joined the members of his family who had already died. He was buried in the city of Jerusalem, but he wasn't placed in the tombs of the kings of Israel. Ahaz's son Hezekiah became the next king after him. Chapter 29 Hezekiah was 25 years old when he became king. He ruled in Jerusalem for 29 years. His mother's name was Abijah. She was the daughter of Zechariah. Hezekiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as King David had done. In the first month of Hezekiah's first year as king, he opened the doors of the Lord's temple. He repaired them. He brought the priests and and Levites in. He gathered them together in the open area on the east side of the temple. He said, Levites, listen to me. Set yourselves apart to the Lord. Set apart the temple of the Lord. He's the God of your people who lived long ago. Remove anything unclean from the temple. Our people weren't faithful. They did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God. They deserted him. They turned their faces away from the place where he lives. They they turned their backs on him. They also shut the doors of the temple porch. They put the lamps out. They didn't burn incense at the temple. They didn't sacrifice burnt offerings there to the God of Israel. So the Lord had become angry with Judah and Jerusalem. He has made them look so bad that everyone is shocked when they see them. They laugh at them. You can see it with your own eyes. That's why our fathers have been killed by swords. That's why our sons and daughters and wives have become prisoners. So I'm planning to make a covenant with the Lord, the God of Israel. Then he'll stop angry, being angry with us. My sons, don't fail to obey the Lord. He has chosen you to stand in front of him and work for him. He wants you to serve him and burn incense to him. They are the Levites who went to work. Mahath and Job were from the family line of Kohath. Mahath was the son of Masai. Job was the son of Azariah. Kish and Azariah were from the family line of Merari. Kish was the son of Abdi. As 
Zarya was the son of Jehalelu. Joah and Edom were from the family line of Gershon. Joah was the son of Zimna. Zimma. Edom was the son of Joah. Shimei and Jeel were from the family line of Elizaphim. Zechariah and Mattanel were from the family line of Asaph. Jehu and Shimei were from the family line of Heman. Shimei and Israel were from the family line of Jeduthun. All, all these Levites gathered the other Levites together. They set themselves apart to the Lord. Then they went to, in to purify, purify the Lord's temple. And that's what the king had ordered them to do. They did what the Lord told them to. The priests went into the Lord's temple to make it pure. They brought out to the temple courtyard everything that was unclean. They had found unclean things in the Lord's temple. The Levites took them and carried them out to the Kibbutz Valley. On the first day of the first month, they began to set everything in the temple apart to the Lord. By the eighth day of the month, they reached the Lord's porch. For eight more days, they set the Lord's temple apart to apart two. They finished on the sixteenth day of the first month. Then they went to King Hezekiah. They reported, "We purified the whole temple of the Lord." That includes the altar for burnt offerings and all its tools. It also includes the table for the holy bread and all its objects. We prepared the king all the things King Ahaz had removed. We set them apart to the Lord. Ahaz had removed them while he was king. He wasn't faithful to the Lord. Those things are now in front of the Lord's altar. Early the next morning, King Hezekiah gathered together the city officials. They all went up to the Lord's temple. They brought seven bulls, seven rams, seven male lambs, and seven male goats with them. They sacrificed the animals as a sin offering for the kingdom, of, for the temple, and for Judah. The king commanded the priests to offer them on the Lord's altar. The priests were from the family line of Aaron. They killed the bulls. Then they splashed the blood against the altar. Next they killed the rams and splashed the blood against the altar. Then they killed the lambs and splashed the blood against the altar. The goats for the sin offering were brought to the king and the whole community. They placed their hands on them. Then the priest, cons then the priest killed the goats. They put the blood on the altar as a sin offering. It paid for the sin of the whole nation of Israel. The king had ordered the burnt offering and the sin offering for the whole nation. Hezekiah stationed the Levites in the Lord's temple. They had symbols, harps, and lyres. They did everything in the way King David, his prophet Gad, and Nathan the prophet had required. The Lord had given commands about all these things through his prophets. So the Levites stood ready with David's musical instruments, and the priests had their trumpets ready. Hezekiah gave the order to sacrifice the burnt offering on the altar. The offering began, singing to the Lord a civic again. The sing the singing was accompanied by the trumpets and by the instruments of David. He had been king of Israel, the whole community that day. They worshipped the Lord. At the same time, at the same time, the musicians played their musical instruments. The priest, the priest blew their trumpets. All of that continued until the burnt offering had been sacrificed. So the offerings were finished. King Hezekiah got down on his knees. He worshipped the Lord. So did everyone who was with him. The king and his officials ordered the Levites to praise the Lord. They used the words of David and Asaph the prophet. They sang praises with joy. They bowed down and worshipped the Lord. Then Hezekiah said, You have set yourselves apart to the Lord. Come and bring sacrifices and thank offerings to his, temp to his temple. So the whole community brought sacrifices and thank offerings. Everyone who wanted to Everyone who wanted to brought burnt offerings. The whole community brought 70 bulls, 100 rams, and 200 male lambs. They brought all of them as a burnt offering, as burnt offerings to the Lord. The total number of animals set apart as sacrifices to the Lord was 600 bulls and 3,000 sheep and goats. But there wasn't, but there weren't enough priests to skin all the burnt offerings. So the realtors believed right to help them. They worked until the task was finished. By that time, other priests had been set apart to the Lord. The Levites had been more careful than the priests. 
when they set themselves apart. There were, there were large numbers of burnt offerings along with the drink offerings and the fat from the friendship offerings. They were offered along with the burnt offerings. So the service of the Lord's temple was started up again. Ezekiel and all the people were filled with joy. That's because everything had been done so quickly. God provided for his people in a wonderful way. Proverbs 19 It is better to be poor and to live with that blame than to be foolish and twist a word and to twist words around. Getting excited about something without knowledge isn't good. It's even worse to be in a hurry and miss the way. A person's own foolish acts destroy their life, but their heart is angry with the Lord. Worse means many friends, but even the closest friend of a poor person abandons them. A dishonest witness will be punished, and whoever pours out lies will not go free. Many try to win the favour of rulers, and everyone is the friend of a person who gives gifts. Poor people are avoided by their whole family. Their friends avoid them even more. The poor person runs after his friends to beg for help, but they can't be found. Anyone who gets wisdom loves life. Anyone who values understanding and will see not see. A dishonest witness will be punished, and those who pour out lies will die. It is improper for a foolish person to live in great comfort, and it is much worse when the slave rules over princes. A person's wisdom makes them patient. They will be honored if they forgive someone who sins against them. A king's anger is like a lion's roar, but his favor is like dew on the grass. A fool's child is a father's world. A nagging wife is like dripping that never stops. You will receive houses and wealth from your parents. But a wise wife is given by the Lord. Anyone who doesn't want to work sleeps his life away, and a person who refuses to work goes hungry. Those who keep commandments keep their lives, but those who don't care how they live will die. Anyone who is kind to poor people lends to the Lord. God will reward them for what they have done. Train your children, because then there is hope. Don't do anything to bring about their deaths. A person with a bad temper must pay for it. If you save them, you will have to do it again. Listen to advice and accept correction. In the end, you will be counted among those who are wise. A person may have plans in their heart, but the Lord's purpose wins out in the end. Everyone longs for love that never fails. It is better to be poor than to be alive. Having respect for the Lord leads to life. Then you will be content and free from trouble. A person who doesn't want to work leaves his hand in the dish. He won't even bring it back up to his mouth. If you're with a person who makes fun of others, try to people who learn to be wise. If you warn their work, who already understand what is right, they will gain even more knowledge. Anyone who loves their father and drags out their mother is a child who brings shame and dishonor. My son, if you stop listening to what I teach you, you will wander away from the words of knowledge. A dishonest witness makes fun of what is right. The mass of those who do wrong go down evil. Those who make fun of others will be judged. Foolish people will be punished. Wait, hang on. Psalm 137. Sorry. We were sitting by the rivers of Babel. We wept when we remembered what had happened to Zion. On the nearby poplar trees, we hung up our harps. Those who held us as prisoners asked us to sing. Those who enjoyed hurting us ordered us to sing joyful songs. They said, sing one of the songs of Zion to us. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while we are in another land? Jerusalem, if I forget you, may my right hand never be able to play the harp again. If I don't remember you, may my tongue still to the roof of my mouth so I can't sing. May it happen if I don't consider Jerusalem to be my greatest joy. Lord, remember what the people of Edom did on the day Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down to the ground. People of Babel, you are sentenced to be destroyed. Happy is the person who pays you back according to what you have done to us. Happy is the person who grabs your babies and smashes them against the rocks. Now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's Prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you have also forgiven our debtors. He is not into temptation, but deliver us from, from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.